Hello and welcome back to Recitation. Uh, today the problem I'd like to work with you is about uh, computing partial derivatives and, uh, and the total differential. So we have a function z which is uh, x squared plus y squared so it depends on the two variables x and y. Now the variables x and y themselves depend on two auxiliary variables u and v. So that's the setup that we have. So in part a we just want to compute the total differential uh, dz in terms of dx and dy. So u and v aren't going to enter into the picture. And then uh, in part b, we're going to compute the partial derivative partial z, partial u in two different ways. Um, first, we're going to compute it using the chain rule. And then we're going to compute it using total differentials. Uh, and so we'll substitute in some of the work that we had in a to solve that part. So uh, why don't I uh, pause, why don't you pause the video now and work on the problem. We'll check back and we'll do it together. Hi and welcome back. Let's get started. So first computing A is not so bad. So we just need to first remember what does it mean, the total differential. So we need to, uh, so the Total di differential dz is just the partial derivative uh, of z in the x direction, dx, plus z in the y direction, dy. Okay. So now, looking at uh, our formula here for z, we have, uh, so the partial derivative of z in the x direction is 2x. So this is 2x dx. And the partial derivative of z and the y is 2y. So we have 2y dy. OK, and that's all we have to do for a. Now, for b, we want to compute this partial derivative in two different ways, first using the chain rule. So let's remember what the chain rule says. So whenever I think about the chain rule, I like to draw this uh, dependency graph. Okay? And this is just a way for me to organize how the ver different variables depend on one another. So at the top we have z. And z is a function of x and y. But x, and y, x is itself a function of both u and v. And y is also a function of u and v. So z depends on x and y, and x and y each jointly depend on u and v. So it's a little bit complicated, the relationships here. So now, uh, what the chain rule says is it says that if we take a partial derivative, partial z, partial u, we have to uh, go through our dependency graph. Every way that we can get from z to u, uh, we get a, a, a term in our summation for, for each one of those. So for instance, z goes to x goes to u. So that means that we have partial z, partial x, partial x, partial u. And then we can also go z goes to y goes to u. And that will give us partial z, partial y, partial y, partial and now these, uh, these partials are, are ones that we can just compute from our, our formulas. So for instance, partial z, partial x, that's 2x, which we computed. Now, partial x, partial u, we have to remember that x is defined as u squared minus v squared. And so partial x, partial u, that's 2u. Uh, partial z, partial y, uh, again, is this 2y that we computed. And partial y, partial u is uh, v. This v is just because y was uv, and we take a partial in the u direction. OK, so, uh, so and in fact, this is, uh, so altogether this is 4ux plus 2vy. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's our partial derivative. So uh, notice that you know u is, excuse me x is a function of u and v. So I could, if I really wanted to, I could substitute for x its formula for u and v. But that's not really necessary. This 
you know, what's interesting about these problems is how the, the, the differentials depend on one, each other, on one another. And uh, I'm perfectly happy with an answer that has mixed variables like this. That's fine. So now, let's go over here and let's see if we can uh, get the same answer by uh, using total differentials. Now I have to say that the chain rule that we used uh, on the previous uh, problem, it, it's, it's the quickest way to do these sorts of things. Um, I, I, I like to do total differentials if I really want, if I have the, some time to actually explore the problem and get comfortable with it, I prefer to use total differentials because I think it's a little bit clearer. Somehow this chain rule, it's just, uh, to me it's just a prescription, it's not, a, it's not an explanation. So why don't we uh, compute some total differentials? So we already saw, let me just repeat uh, over here, we already saw that dz is 2x dx plus 2y dy. Okay. Now, now we want to use the fact that x is itself a function of u and v. So that's what we need to do now. So that tells us that dx is, uh, so 2u du minus 2v dv in the same way. And dy, so remember y was uv. So taking d of uv, we get v du plus u dv. Okay, so now, so what we've done is we've just listed out all the partial uh, different, excuse me, all of the total differentials. And uh, the nice thing about this is once you've done these computations, now it's just, uh, it's just substitution. So what we really want to know is we want to know how does z depend on u and v. And so all we need to do is uh, substitute in our formulas for dx here. So this tells us that dz is, okay, so we have 2x. Now instead of dx, we just uh, plug in here, so we have 2u du minus 2v dv. Uh, so that was this term. And now we have plus 2y. And uh, now we, we just plug in this. So v du plus u dv. You see, it's just substitution. So then uh, now we just expand everything out using uh, just just uh, expanding these out. And so we get, okay, so let's collect all the things involving uh, du. So if we collect all the things involving du, we have 4, 2 times 2 times x times u, 4xu plus 2yv. This whole quantity times du. And then if we collect the terms in dv, we have, uh, so we have 2yu, so that's uh, coming from here, and then we have a minus 4xv. Okay, and now what that tells us is that, uh, so, so let's just remember that uh, the, the, the one definition of the, of the partial derivative, partial z, partial u, is this coefficient. So if we write, so if I go over here, if we write uh, the total differential dz, we can write that as uh, partial z, partial u, du, plus uh, partial z, partial v, dv. Right? So. Well, look, what we have here on these two sides is, this, is, uh, is essentially the same expression. So that means if we want to compute partial z, partial u, then that's just equal to this coefficient here. So we get that partial z, partial u is 4xu plus uh, 2, that should be v, one of those is an x. Uh, let's see, so what, where did this come from? Yeah, one of those is an x, sorry is a y, 2vy, okay? Now, uh, you know, just as a, as a sanity check, why don't we go back to the middle of the board 
and uh, we'll see that we got the same thing. So 4xu plus 2vy, that's what we concluded for partial z, partial u. And then going back to the middle of the board, uh, that's what we found again. So uh, let's just go over the two different methods and, uh, and compare them. So if, if, I'm, if I'm in a rush to do a computation, uh, maybe I'm taking an exam, uh, I definitely think it's, it's the quickest to just compute uh, to figure out what the dependency of the variables is, uh, and I use this dependency graph, and then I just trace all the paths from z to the uh, independent variable u that I'm interested in, and, uh, and then uh, this, uh, and I multiply all of the partial derivatives that correspond to each edge, and I get, uh, I get an expression. Now, if I have more time, uh, then I, I really prefer to use the method of total differentials that we did on the third board, um, I like it because uh, once you do some simple calculus and then after that it's just it's basic algebra. So um, it, it, it's, uh, I, I find that I'm less likely to make a mistake doing that method. Um, but as you saw, it involves computing a lot more derivatives that we didn't actually use in the final answer. For instance, when we computed the partial, uh, when we computed total differentials, we got an expression for partial z, partial v at the end of the day, even though we weren't asked to do that. So it, it, um, it, it's, it's lengthier, but I think more conceptually straightforward. So I think I'll leave it at that.